Hi, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Penguins in peril. Why? The climate crisis. We're celebrating International Women and Girls in Science Day. We'll take you to the slopes of Kabul. And there's a skateboarding dog in our animals doing stuff. And at the top of our news feeds today, the climate crisis. Environmentalists say that 2020 is a crucial year for life on Earth. They're calling for significant change in the way that we all live and chiefly that governments introduce laws to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide being pumped into the atmosphere. You see, it's that carbon caused by many human activities, including the burning of fossil fuels, that's causing the Earth to heat up to unsustainable levels. New research from Greenpeace has found that the warming of our oceans has led to the decimation of a type of penguin in Antarctica. Here's Adama with the first of our reports on this issue. Chinstrap penguins, named for the black band around their necks, are under threat. Like the canary in the coal mine, the sudden decline in their numbers is a warning that the Southern Ocean's ecosystem is fundamentally changing. Last week, Antarctica recorded its highest temperature. Global sea levels are expected to rise around three meters over the next few centuries. Why does it matter? It matters a lot because of sea level rise. There's, there's two big glaciers. There's the Pine Island Glacier and the Thwaites Glacier. Once those, the melting from these, these glaciers, you know, means we're in big trouble when it comes to sea level rise. Global heating is also causing ice sheets to disappear rapidly. Ice is vital for phytoplankton, which fatten up krill. Krill is the staple diet of the chinstrap, but these shrimp-like crustaceans are also on the decline, making it harder for the penguins to get enough to eat. Since they were first surveyed in the 1970s, the chinstrap population has declined by 77%. We knew chinstrap penguins were on the decline in the, the wider Antarctic Peninsula region for a number of years now, but really a lot of gaps in our data set means that we're not sure if this is a widespread phenomenon or not. As we've been going along with this expedition, it's becoming pretty clear that just about everywhere we look, chinstrap penguins especially are, are on the decline. And in a place like this, uh, we can see gentoo penguins are sort of moving in to, to take their place in, in certain ways. With such dramatic changes in their habitat, species like the chinstrap and many others will likely die out. And another species facing extinction is the bumblebee. The numbers of these fuzzy little insects have plummeted in recent years. They're down 46% in North America, 17% in Europe. And what makes this so devastating for all of us is that bees are vital in the pollination of plants to provide the food that we eat. The climate crisis is, of course, to blame. Now, with bees, it's not just hotter temperatures and extreme heat waves, it's also the dramatic shifts in weather patterns. Well, one person who has been resiliently vocal in the past year or so is the Swedish teen activist Greta Thunberg. It's been announced that the BBC will be collaborating with her on a documentary series, all part of her quest to make sure that climate crisis remains utmost in people's consciousness. Now, one way to help save the planet is not to waste food, and one Berlin supermarket is being seen as a world leader in doing just that. The Surplus Grocery Store sells stuff which has expired or is near expiration date, is misshapen, or which is damaged, and all at a discount of 80%. The supermarket says it saved 2,000 tonnes from going to waste in 2019. The US and Europe are the biggest culprits when it comes to wasting food. The average person in Europe wastes 110 kilos of food each year. And Airbus unveiled a new aircraft design that it says will slash carbon emissions by some 20%. The European plane maker has been carrying out secret test flights since last year. The aer aircraft has been made as less aerodynamic drag, making it more efficient to fly. Well, now to Japan, where an annual snow festival has ended on a damp note. And once again, it's all to do with the climate crisis.
It's an event that symbolizes winter, and I wanted to see it at least once before I die. There was a strange lack of snow in my neighborhood, which concerned me. So I'm happy this festival actually took place. Given the weather, the only thing we can do is pray. This is the 71st edition of this festival, a festival that we want to pass on to younger generations. Maybe in the future we'll have to reconsider the size of the sculptures and the layout and continue to bring in snow from other areas. All right, it's now time to take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Now, a thing called the Broom Challenge has been trending. Idiots have been posting pictures like this, some with text that says NASA says the Earth's gravitational pull and location in the universe today means the world is in perfect balance. Hence, the broom standing up. Turns out some brooms can just be balanced on their bristles. That's it. Oh my gosh, look at that. You're gonna get shot. You come another put it close to me. You, so, you run into me, you'll get you're shot. Me. So you're not blocking me, you're not holding me. This is my campus, brother. Well, this video of a deputy sheriff threatening to shoot a student while he was trying to drive off campus is being shared widely. It happened at a school in Florida. The student was apparently going to a dental appointment. The officer involved is still employed. And this is a model of a Carnotaurus. It was bought by a man in the UK for his four-year-old son, but because it was bought online, he didn't realize how big it was big it is, or so he says, even though it did cost him $1,200. It now lives in the garden, obviously, and it's been called Chaz, obviously. Well, next, it's the United Nations International Day of Women and Girls in Science, a time to encourage more female participation in the field. Here's Taibe. The UN believes a women's place could definitely be in a science lab. Girls and boys perform equally well in science and mathematics. To rise to the challenges of the 21st century, we need to harness our full potential. That requires dismantling gender stereotypes. But on International Day of Women and Girls in Science, the statistics paint a different picture. Less than 30% of the world's researchers are women, according to UNESCO data. And only 30% of female students elect to study science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Female enrolment in information and communications technology is at 3%. 5% in natural science and mathematics and 8% in engineering and construction. But there are role models, like Tu Yuyu, a pharmaceutical chemist whose visionary research on malaria helped save millions of lives. And Katherine Johnson, a mathematician whose calculations were critical to the success of the US crewed space flights. And perhaps the most famous, Marie Curie, a physicist and chemist whose radioactivity research laid the foundations of modern nuclear science, from X-rays to radiotherapy for treating cancer. But pioneering women scientists are only one part of it. Research from the journal Science shows that by the age of six, gender stereotypes are so pervasive that girls already consider boys more suited to intelligent activities than they are. We need to break gender stereotypes that link science to masculinity and expose young generations to positive role models, women engineers, astronauts and researchers. One thing is for sure, scientists will always be needed and the hope is more and more of them in the future will be women. OK, we'll keep on spinning around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Tuesday. Now, Britain has deported 17 Jamaican offenders. They've all been convicted of crimes and served sentences of a year or more in the United Kingdom. A court order has prevented the dep deportation of another 25 other worries. They may not have had access to adequate legal advice. There's been some resistance to sending the offenders to Jamaica as many had come to Britain as children. Britain's Tory government has made entering and staying in the UK increasingly difficult for non-citizens. 
The African Union has called for the creation of a counter-terrorism force on the continent. At a meeting held in Ethiopia, the organization has voiced its concerns about the presence of French troops in Africa, some 4,500 since 2014, at the request of Mali. The AU says that driving out terrorists in Africa must be spearheaded by African forces. A new cable news channel is launching in America. It's called the Black News Channel and was created by a man called J.C. Watts Jr. He's a former Republican congressman and by Bob Brilliante, a TV exec. It'll be based in Tallahassee, Florida, and according to the website, it will fill a void by providing African-American viewers news, information, and educational content focused on their interests and needs while tapping into subscription television's most profitable market. So it aims to make money from black people by serving the news it thinks they'll be interested in but doesn't seem to understand irony. In a recent episode of the excellent Curb Your Enthusiasm, the lead character realizes that wearing a Make America Great Again hat means some people will not want to hang out with you. Wearing the hat also means an angry biker in the show doesn't want to beat him up. Now, Trump tweeted the clip with the words, tough guys for Trump, clearly missing the joke that's on him and the people who support him. Hashtag sad. To Afghanistan now, a country still massively unstable due to warring factions where some young people are trying to forget the violence and improve their skills, their alpine skills. Take a look at this. These slopes on the outskirts of Kabul are playing host to a new generation of Afghan snowboarders. The war-torn country may seem an unlikely winter sports destination, but for these young people, the Kohe Koreg is a popular snowboarding spot. When I see the craze for this sport, girls and boys doing it, falling down again and again, but keeping on going, I really believe it has a bright future and we can make something out of it. The hillside was used as a base by the Afghan Mujahideen to rain artillery and rockets on Kabul during the civil war in the 1990s. This new generation of Afghanistan has a different vision for this country. They want development in every aspect of life. We are optimistic that when the new generation comes, they will come with a vision to present a developed Afghanistan to the world. But some are concerned about a potential Taliban return. If the Taliban come back, it will be impossible to do snowboarding because the Taliban are not sports friendly. They don't want peace or sports. So if the Taliban return, we won't be able to do snowboarding. Despite the tense political situation in Kabul, these young Afghans are looking towards a better life. And from snowboarding humans to skateboarding dogs in today's Animals Doing Stuff, the Reuters news agency paid actual money for this footage of a dog on a skateboard in a city in Russia. The dog is called Sonia. Her owner is a guy called Dmitri. He didn't give a last name. Could he be embarrassed? And that's it. The dog apparently loves doing this sort of thing and the internet sure likes to look at it. do you from the newsfeed team reach out to me with your questions comments complaints and suggestions you'll find me at kamali melbourne you'll find us 24 7 on youtube subscribe to the channel follow me on twitter follow subscribe and add and i will see you again tomorrow